We all know that having a healthy lifestyle is very important, but it can be also challenging. We should have a structured sleeping schedule, a healthy diet, and exercise regularly. But the real fun starts when we are considering blood pressure levels, our glucose levels, and overweight. And a lot of advice is willingly and unwillingly presented to you by television, some random gurus from the internet, and friends and family. And this makes it very hard to decipher which information is not worth following and what information you should definitely follow based on the latest medical principles. And that is where I come in, as I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands with a mission to medically educate my viewers, you. In this video, we will cover cardiovascular risk, what it is, how you can prevent it, and what possible tips and tricks can help you. So make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any important, possibly life-saving information. And remember, I'm just a random doctor from the internet. I know nothing about your personal situation. So always discuss personal questions with your personal doctor. Let's get learning. Before I can start by explaining cardiovascular disease, we should discuss your cardiovascular symptoms. Because if you understand these basics, you know where the diseases come from and how you can prevent them. And that is ultimately what you want to know. In essence, it's quite simple. You have heart, which is a muscle that pumps blood through your entire body. With every contraction, blood flows from your heart into the arteries to your organ systems and then back to the heart through your veins. As with any muscle, your heart needs nutrients and oxygen to remain functioning, both which are present in your blood, which is supplied to your heart through several blood vessels called your coronary arteries, which wrap around your heart. Which brings us to cardiovascular disease which is actually a class of all different types of diseases that all affect your blood vessels or your heart. Over the years, your body can build up plaques of fat, cholesterol and other substances in your arteries. In medical terms, this is called atherosclerosis. Over the years, these plaques become bigger and bigger up until they block entire blood vessels or they can rupture, create blood clots and then obstruct blood vessels. This leads to insufficient blood flow and damage to the organs that the blood vessels would normally supply. As you can imagine, this can cause several types of medical problems, but to keep this video practical and useful, we will focus on the four most common ones. First of all, coronary heart disease, which affects your coronary arteries, being the arteries that supply your heart with blood. This can lead to agina pectoris, which is chest pain caused by a partial obstruction of your coronary arteries, or an actual heart attack, which is a complete obstruction of the blood flow through one of your coronary arteries, causing a potentially fatal damage to your heart muscle. And lastly, heart failure, where your heart is unable to pump sufficient blood to your body. The next class is cerebrovascular disease, and as the name suggests, it affects your cerebral vascular system. An obstruction or a blood clot may lead to a TIA, which stands for a transient ischemic attack, where the blood flow to a part of your brain is temporarily disrupted. Or a stroke, where the blood flow to a part of your brain is permanently blocked. This can have huge consequences and lead to permanent brain damage. The following class is peripheral arterial disease, which refers to abnormal narrowings of arteries other than those which apply the heart of the brain, usually affecting someone's legs, arms, neck and kidney. And the most typical symptoms are pain in your legs when walking, which resolves when resting. Other symptoms might be skin ulcers, bluish skin, cold skin, numbness in the legs, an abnormal nail and hair growth in the affected legs. And the last class is aortic diseases. Your aorta being the largest blood vessel in your body, which carries the blood flow directly from your heart through the rest of your body. One of the most common aortic diseases is an aortic aneurysm, where the aorta becomes weakened, grows and bulges outwards. This usually doesn't cause any symptoms, but there is a chance it can burst and cause life-threatening bleeding. The bigger the aorta grows, the higher this risk becomes. Don't worry, as this is still complex. I will be making in-depth videos on each of these diseases. For now, it's just important that you understand the scope of cardiovascular disease. And it's also important we all get educated on cardiovascular disease because it's so prevalent. In fact, it's the number one cause of death in most regions except for Africa. 32% of all deaths are caused by cardiovascular disease. To put that into perspective, in the United States alone, 
every 36 seconds someone dies because of cardiovascular disease. So that's tremendous. And therefore it's important to know how it is caused and how it can be prevented. And as I already mentioned, atherosclerosis plays an important role. But now you might wonder, how is atherosclerosis caused? And then things get interesting. As there are a lot of factors that can increase your risk of developing it. These are called risk factors. And the more risk factors you have, the greater your chances are on developing a cardiovascular disease. So let's dive in. One of the most important factors is your blood pressure. If your blood pressure is high, then over the years it can damage the inside of your blood vessels, increasing your chance for atherosclerosis. The same is true for smoking, a high cholesterol, being overweight or obese, and diabetes. And the same is true for not exercising enough or sitting or resting a huge part of the day, as this increases your chances on becoming overweight, which can increase your blood pressure, your glucose levels and your cholesterol levels, all are risk factors for developing cardiovascular disease. So, sitting is the new smoking, at least they say. Furthermore, if close family members are dealing with cardiovascular disease at a young age, so for men before 55 and for women before age 65, this will also increase your risk of developing it because of your gene pool. Here is also important to mention that your ethnic background can also increase your risk, especially for people from Southeast Asia, people from Black Africa or Caribbean Africa. Other factors include your age, as cardiovascular disease is most common in people over 50, gender, as men are more likely to develop it, diet, as an unhealthy diet can lead to high cholesterol and a high blood pressure, and alcohol consumption, as excessive consumption can also increase your cholesterol and blood pressure. Which brings us to maybe the most important risk factor of all, not clicking the like and subscribe button, as this endangers this YouTube channel. Now, all jokes aside, these videos cost me a lot of time and effort to make and I hope you're learning a lot. If you do, please leave a like on the video, this will help out the channel tremendously and consider subscribing. I'm posting weekly medical videos to help you, my viewer, to increase your medical knowledge. So if you're interested, click the like and subscribe button, it's free and you can always change your mind. Which finally brings us to some good news, as the tools for prevention of cardiovascular disease are also found in the risk factors as up to 90% of cardiovascular disease may be prevented if risk factors are avoided. Therefore, I hope it's no surprise that the name of the game is a healthy lifestyle. So stop smoking, limit your alcohol consumption, exercise at least 150 minutes each week, consume a balanced diet with low levels of saturated fat, salt and sugar, eat plenty of fibers, fruit and vegetables, maintain a healthy weight, have a structured sleeping schedule with about seven to nine hours of sleep each night and decrease your stress. Do so by maintaining social contacts, doing fun activities and relaxing sufficiently. These new lifestyle interventions can literally save your life, but they can be very hard to implement as habits are very difficult to change. Luckily, this is not something you have to do on your own as a medical healthcare provider can help you. So if you do visit your doctor for help, he or she can help you to find out the extent of your cardiovascular disease and your possible underlying causes. The doctor might do this by asking about your medical history, the current problems and symptoms, the medication you're using, and afterwards your doctor might do a physical examination, do an ECG, which is a recording of your heart's electrical activity, do some blood tests, and if necessary, a coronary angiography which is a process that uses X-ray imaging to see your heart's blood vessels. Furthermore, your doctor could also refer you to a cardiologist or a dietist, depending on your underlying problems and causes. Which brings us to the last topic to discuss. If all these lifestyle changes were insufficient, your doctor might also advise some treatment options to lower your risk for cardiovascular disease or to better manage it. And remember again that arteriosclerosis, the obstruction of your blood vessels, plays a huge role in cardiovascular disease. And therefore, most prescribed treatments are aimed at preventing or decreasing this process. Therefore, your doctor might prescribe blood thinning medication, which prevents blood clotting and reduces the risk of a heart attack. Examples are a low-dose aspirin, clopidogrel, rivaroxaban, and heparin. Your doctor might prescribe statins, which lower your cholesterol level. Examples are atorvastatin, simvastatin, rosuvastatin, and pravastatin. Next up, your doctor might prescribe a beta blocker, which slows down your heart rate. Examples are atenolol, lisoprolol, or metoprolol. The doctor might use nitrate, which is used to widen your blood vessels. 
Examples are nitroglycerin and isosorbide mononitrate. Furthermore, your doctor might prescribe an ACE inhibitor, which are used to treat a high blood pressure. Examples are ramipril and lisinopril. Calcium channel blockers, which can also decrease blood pressure. These do so by relaxing the muscles that made up the walls of your arteries. Examples are amlodipine, verapamil and diltiazem. And lastly, diuretics. They work by flushing excess water and salt from your body through your urine. Examples are furosemide and spironolactone. In some cases, however, the usage of medication is insufficient and your doctor might recommend a surgical procedure. Commonly, your doctor might recommend a coronary angioplasty and stenting. In this procedure, your doctor will guide a long, thin tube called a catheter from an artery in your groin or your wrist to the blocked artery. This catheter has a special balloon on its tip which can be inflated to open up the blocked artery. Afterwards, a stand can be placed to keep the artery open, restoring the blood flow when necessary. In other cases, your doctor might perform an artery bypass surgery. Here, new veins or arteries are sutured in a place beyond the blocked or narrowed artery, allowing the blood flow to bypass the narrowed section. I hope this gave you a complete picture of cardiovascular disease, what risk factors are involved, how you can prevent it, and how a possible treatment plan could look like. But if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and I will do my best to answer each and every one of them. For those of you that want to keep on learning, check out the playlist in the description as educated people make healthier decisions. All that rests me now is to thank you for watching. If you did learn something, click the like button. This will help out your channel tremendously. Consider subscribing. I'm posting weekly awesome medical videos to help you, my viewer, increase your medical knowledge. Furthermore, a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Thank you, Sebastian, who is an university supporter. And for those of you that can't get enough, check out my Instagram as well, at How to Medicaid. I will see you all next week with a new video. Stay healthy and see you next week. Bye bye.